All right, boys and girls, today we're doing Python and we're doing it on four machines. I got the M1 MacBook Air 16 gigs and M2 MacBook Air base model, eight gigs, upgraded model, 24 gigs, and a MacBook Pro base model, 16 gigs, M1 Pro. That took a long time to say, and it's, I don't know how long this test is gonna take me, but a long time. I wanna do two tests today too. I wanna do a multi-threaded test and a single-threaded Python test. And we're gonna kick things off with our friend Mandelbrot. So if you go to Benchmarks Game, this basically pins languages against each other. You've seen this before on this channel many times, but the next test you've never seen on this channel before, and I like it, so I might start doing it. All right, what is Mandelbrot? If you go to this Benchmarks Game, you can select a language that you want, or you can hop right into the algorithm that you want. So I'm gonna go to Python, and I'm gonna find the algorithm, which is Mandelbrot, Python three number seven, that one. Why do I want this one? Because this particular algorithm uses up all the available cores to the max, and it, and it does it almost instantly. This gives you the code contributed by users, and it tells you how to run it. There we go. I've already have it prepared right here and I've set up a conda environment so I'm going to go to conda activate pi 38 if you don't know what I'm doing here basically anaconda or mini conda I'm using mini conda allows you to separate your python environment so I've set one up for python 3.8 if you don't know how to do that I got a video about that and setting that up down below there's a link all right, Py38. Now I'm inside my Python 3.8 environment. So if I go to Python version, there it is, 3.8. And I'm ready to run this. So all I do is say Python main.py and I give it the parameter, which is 16,000, just like the documentation said. But there is one thing I wanna change and that's I wanna pipe out my output to dev null because it's also kind of a side effect. So I don't wanna see that affect my results. I'm all set up to run this. Here's our friend, the Schwarzenegger. I don't know if it's the Schwarzenegger or just Schwarzenegger or Mr. Schwarzenegger. The Schwarzenegger. We've got three fingers and I need a fourth because we got four computers today. I don't know if I can hit these at the same time either because it's, it's gonna be kind of hard to balance. And let's go. I did it. <laughs> All right, look at that. It jumped to 108 degrees right away. Wow, I didn't even get to put the Schwarzenegger down yet. Let's go. That's intense. Now, these two machines, the M2s, are the only ones that are showing that much heat right away. Here, we'll find out if it's going to affect us with Python in relation to the M1 and the MacBook Pro, which is sitting at a nice, cool 89 degrees Celsius. Now up to 90. Ho, 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 ho. That one is done. Well, I kind of expected this to happen, really. So the MacBook Pro finished first, then the MacBook Air, the upgraded variety with 24 gigs of RAM, then the M2, and finally the M1. But there is one thing I'd like to do, and that's to add the time command to the beginning so we can actually get a printout of how long this thing takes. And that'll confirm my suspicions, if any, and it'll give us a second run to see if I was right. I'm nervous. Are you nervous? I'm nervous. Oh, we got a winner. <laughs> So far, I was right. One more. I feel like I'm conducting an orchestra over here. M1, there we go. Okay, so we are pretty much in order here. The M1 MacBook Air finished last at one minute, three seconds. Then the base model M2, 54 seconds. Then 52 seconds for the upgraded M2 MacBook Air. And finally, 43 seconds, considerably faster with the MacBook Pro. Now, this does tell me that this test has a little bit to do with memory. Not that much, but it does have a little bit to do with memory because both of these machines have the exact same number of cores, four efficiency and four performance cores, whereas this one has six performance cores and two efficiency cores. And we're seeing a considerable boost over there. So the performance in the cores is more important for this particular multi-core test than memory. This M2 MacBook Air has more memory than the MacBook Pro, but it is finishing this test slower, letting us conclude that this particular example relies more on the performance cores themselves. And not even M2 versus M1 cores, just the number of performance cores. So that was a multi-threaded test. Let's move on to the next test. And I wanna show you this because this is pretty cool. I found this other YouTube channel called Dave's Garage. And he goes into some serious detail about language benchmarking. He's a C-sharp fan, but he created a repository. Uh, since then, a lot of people have contributed to it. This repository contains uh, over 60 languages to test, including Python. So I'm curious about that one. I wanna grab that right now. 
All right, I've cloned the repository. Here it is, and I'll put a link to it down below if you want to check it out yourself. It's on GitHub Plumber Software LLC Primes. What is Primes? Well, this calculates the prime numbers up to a certain threshold that you set, and this can be done with different algorithms. You can use single core operations or multi core operations. These are divided into languages and solutions. So they have uh, over 60 languages. Look at this. We've got um, Ada, AMD, Brain. If you don't know what brain f is, check out Fireship's explanation of that. <laughs> they had a good video on that recently. COBOL, C Sharp, and of course, a lot of others and Python. And then they're subdivided into different solutions based on the algorithm, solution one, solution two, and so on. Now, to run this whole set of tests is gonna take a long time. Since we're focused on Python right now, I've cloned the repository and I wanna do the Python test which is gonna give us a single core result. But if you're curious about some of these other tests, let me know in the comments down below. If we take a look at the code there and find Prime's Python, you can see the different solutions there. We're gonna do this solution right here. It's really simple. What's nice about these tests is that you're just finding primes, but it creates a significant problem for a machine to solve, and every machine does it differently based on the power of the machine. So what we're gonna see as a result is how many iterations of this solution can be performed by the machine in a given amount of time. Because these are M2 processors here, these are the latest and greatest cores, so they they are probably going to perform the best. I wanna test this theory, but I wanna see how far behind the M1 Pro and the M1 are, and how much of a difference between the M2 machines there'll be, because these bit arrays have to be stored in memory somewhere. So we'll see how much memory this test eats up while it's running, and therefore, if your particular situation is similar to something like this, you might consider one machine over another based on memory usage. And I think you know what the answer might be to this, but let's do it. If you're curious to look at the code itself, it's pretty elegant and it started by a 40 plus year veteran. Maybe I'm exaggerating that time. However, Dave has been working in software, so he's been doing this for a long time and lots of other people have contributed to this. If you've just cloned the repository, all you need to do is run make and this will run the test for all of them at the same time. There is one dependency though, and that's Docker. So I need to kick off Docker, and I am actually on the exact same version of Docker on all these machines as well. I think it's a bit unfortunate that this test relies on Docker, but I can understand why it would to keep this pretty repeatable on everybody's machines and keep it pretty similar, because there is a table of results, and I'll leave a link to this repo down below as well so you can check it out. And that way everybody's results are kind of consistent and consistently tabulated. In order to run a very specific test though, like the Python one, we have to point it to a specific directory. I was just looking it up. That's why I was doing the, anyway. Directory equals primes Python or prime Python and then the solution. So I'm gonna do solution two here. Now I do wanna run this twice. And the reason for that is it's gonna have to grab a Docker image the first time around and that might affect the results. So I wanna make sure I do this twice, at least twice. We've got preliminary results and it's kind of aligned to what I expected. So if we examine this, you'll see that Python solution two, this is a single threaded operation and we're capped at five seconds. What's nice about this is it's not just telling you five seconds, it's telling you exactly down to the 10 thousandths or a hundred thousandths. So you can assess that based on that number. Let's just say five seconds. I'm gonna round everything anyway, because we're far enough apart. The M2 MacBook Air that's upgraded finished 1960 per second. So a total of 9,805 passes. The next winner is the base model, and that one did 9,772. Then the MacBook Pro did 9,226 passes, and finally the MacBook Air M1 did 9,045. Let's do this one more time now that we have the Docker image. It shouldn't take that long this time but uh, I'm not expecting the results to vary that much because this test starts measuring the results once the Docker container is running, not before. So it's pretty convenient. It's a well-designed benchmark. The results are pretty close. 9,785 on the upgraded M2 MacBook Air, 9,757, very close on the base model M2 MacBook Air. Then these two are pretty close too. The MacBook Pro, since it doesn't have a multi-core advantage, 
in this test. The chips are pretty much the same. The cores are pretty much the same between the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. So we've got 9,222 passes on the MacBook Pro and 9,138 passes on the M1 MacBook Air. Here's a table of the final results. Here's the original multi-threaded test. And here is the single threaded test. There you go, folks. If you found this video entertaining or useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider joining as a member down below. Thank you to all those members who've been around for six months or more now at this point. I really appreciate it. It really helps me out and helps the channel out. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers here and I wanna thank you for contributing. It allows me to keep going and it's also really encouraging. So you can join down there or if you can't join, then go ahead and subscribe. That helps out too. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.